Hi, welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. My name is Allison Schneider with ACEC, and I'm joined by Joe Romano, Principal and Vice President at Langa and involved with our ACEC coalitions, and John Russo, Founder and Board Member Emeritus of the U.S. Institute of Building Documentation, or USIBD. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. We are here because ACEC has an upcoming education session called BIM Demystified. And I know that the Coalition of Professional Surveyors and US IBD have been working together um, to develop this. Joe, can you talk a little bit about the Coalition of Professional Surveyors that ACEC has, we call it COPS for short, um, and their role in the building industry? Sure. It's a great name because we police everything, but um, the Coalition of Professional Surveyors is a segmented group inside of ACEC's national organization. There are other coalitions, and our coalition focuses on um, professional land surveying, the business side of that, and along with that business side is the interaction with these other disciplines, whether it's civil, uh, geotech, mechanical, structural, um, and there's, I think that's all of them. I should know that. But uh, um, I am the past chair of that as a professional surveyor. Langan's been involved with ACC for as long as I've been here, which is uh, this year will be 43 years. Um, and uh, this, this uh, agreement or this relationship with the USIBD um, is dear to my heart. I'm a former board member and founder also. And uh, I think John can explain a little bit about how we came to be as the USIBD, and uh, you take it from there, John. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, USIBD uh, was founded back in 20, uh, 2012, and uh, it was really just a, a number of industry folks like Joe and myself that got together and and said, you know what, for uh, building documentation, we need a a place to go for support and uh, standards development, education, uh, networking, and we couldn't we couldn't find an organization that was dedicated solely to building documentation, and uh, so we ended up uh, forming a, a little group of folks, and we we figured out, you know what, uh, let's. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's start up uh, this nonprofit and see if we can get members to join. And and uh, we did that, and uh, and we were off and running. Can you talk a bit about the key initiatives and programs you have aimed at advancing building documentation practices? Yeah, of course. Uh, the the first thing that that comes to mind is our uh, level of accuracy specification. That's what we're probably most known for right now, and it was a uh, a specification uh, to help uh, you know uh, providers, to help uh, owners, people procuring services, specify the type of uh, accuracy that they wanted on their building documentation uh, projects there wasn't uh, a, a spec that we could find to help folks with that. So we, we said, let's, let's go ahead and develop that. Um, we also have uh, some other initiatives. We, uh, we have a, an imagery specification as well. And then uh, we're really excited. We're getting ready to launch our uh, education center, which uh, is, is uh, due out in this third quarter. And you know where that, where that fits in with the coalition of surveyors is when we started this first conversations, John and I, John will recall, we, we debated the name of the organization for a while and we wanted to put the word survey in there and we felt that was limiting. But a lot of this software and hardware is, is marketed towards surveyors and engineers. And since then it's expanded, but we, we always felt that we, surveyors and professional documentation people need to work to the standard. Surveyors work to national standards anyway, and we really wanted to let level the playing field and let our clientele um, be able to compare apples to apples. And it was, as John said, there was nothing out there. So to bring the these standards to the members of ACC coalitions, um, 
is is def definitely within the realm of the organization and will definitely benefit uh, all our members. Can you talk a bit about why the building documentation is so critical for the design, construction, and maintenance of these buildings, why that standard is necessary? Yeah, I mean, uh, building documentation is really, uh, is really important. Um, you know, having accurate information about buildings before you start design is, uh, is really important. A lot of times architects and engineers don't have this information, so they're forced to make assumptions. A lot of times those assumptions are bad assumptions and those get uncovered when they get to construction. That's, that can be very costly. It can be, uh, cost you a lot of money. It can, uh, be costly in, uh, time delays. Um, so, you know, the, the whole concept of, of what we're trying to do is help come up with standards, best practices, uh, you know, processes to help, uh, understand what the existing conditions are of these buildings that we're all uh, dealing with. And, and especially in today's market where there's a lot of adaptive reuse, there's this whole push for sustainability. Why knock something down and build new when you can start with a good shell and good bones and the ability to, to document that and map it accurately and um, be able to represent that in now, a lot of deliverables today are in what people talk about BIM and Revit. And a lot of those tools and those processes were created for design side of a new building. And the USIBD really focuses on existing buildings and existing conditions. And not only were there no standards, but there were very few tools, right, John, that allowed us to do some of this. And I think we pushed some vendors to create some tools for us. Yeah, no, that's right. And, um, you know, so you also have, uh, you know, tools that we work with, like you said, they weren't designed for documenting existing conditions. They were designed for design work. So, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the BIM authoring tools are like that. They work orthogonally. They like everything square and plumb and, you know, um, but you know, we go out and we, we document a building maybe using a laser scanner, which captures every out of plumb condition that you have. Um, so now we have the challenge of trying to figure out how do we take, you know, the real world, you know, uh, measured conditions from the laser scan and take a tool, uh, you know, a BIM authoring tool and uh, that wants to make it all flat and, you know, uh, square and, and plum, how do we how do we uh, represent that measured data? And then, what's in our contract? What is the accuracy standard we're being held to? Uh, you know, because there's we say there's a measured accuracy, which is what's in the point cloud, uh, the scan data, and then we're going to represent that. We're going to introduce some more error with the tools we're using. Um, so there's a, a represented accuracy. So there's kind of two accuracies that we we have to contend with. That's really interesting because as we have this new ability to collect more and more data, how do we accurately represent that when it's time to send that back out? And I also, talking about this as a tool for sustainability is a really interesting way of thinking about it. Can you expand on that a little bit? The, the um, I'll take you back to when John and I first met, we were working on a project together for the GSA and we realized that, well, the GSA wanted to map and model and document all their space for this reason, just so they could manage that space better, right? There's a lot of waste in both the operational side of the building and in just the construction itself, right? It's a lot cheaper and sustainable to reuse than it is to build new. Um, and I think that's often overlooked. Um, plus, there's also this idea of overuse or misuse of the data that these services could produce. So we were careful to talk about intended use, right? And again, leveling the playing field. And I think sustainability, it, it's pretty obvious, right? It, if you can document a building and put it through some uh, facility management type software and management software to turn lights on, turn lights off, change the heating, change the cooling, change where people sit and do some of that 
automatically or through programs, um, you definitely, uh, it's a benefit to not only the building owners, the employees and to the environment. John, you got anything there? Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of uh, where the industry is heading, the kind of the, the big buzzword is digital twin. I think what you just described is a digital twin, right? We're taking, we're documenting what exists, we're, we're digitizing it, we've got a, a replica of it in a digital form, and then we're, uh, we're connecting that with the actual physical environment. We're creating, you know, Internet of Things sensors that we can connect and get real readings off of uh, building equipment, temperatures, uh, you know, that kind of thing uh, to better help manage the physical space that uh, is being occupied. It's a great opportunity to take the data you have and address challenges and, and maybe, you know, arrive at a different conclusion than you set out with in the beginning. We often talk about downstream use of the data, right? So you're collecting it for one purpose. But as this and as this organization and as the market sector grew and software became more available and more um, more powerful, it was easy to see that there's a lot more downstream use of the data. And if you can collect the data to a high level of accuracy, you don't have to worry about it being inaccurate later on. Right. So these are all kind of things that we've talked about and, and they are in, embedded in the standards and procedures that we put together. Let's talk a little bit about this upcoming education session. It's called BIM Demystified, ensuring efficiency, accuracy, and communication throughout the building life cycle. Talk to us about what this education session is gonna cover and who should be there. Uh, yeah, I mean, who should be there? Let's, let's start with that. Um, you know, so anyone with an interest in, in, uh, in BIM and, and building documentation and, and uh, it should be there, you know, owners, architects, engineers, uh, you know, surveyors, you know, people documenting the buildings. Um, that's something uh, that will be of interest to you. Uh, you're going to learn about uh, different uh, methods and processes of how to uh, collect data, how to represent data, and how that data transfers through the, uh, the entire building life cycle. I mean, I, I would agree on on from the coalition and the ACEC side, I would say this should be any one of our members, any coalition or any member definitely have to, has to understand BIM, has to understand this idea and concept of accuracies and the idea of um, representative accuracy versus acquired accuracy and how the two are really different subjects and can end up and impact the final deliverable. So I say all our members uh, of ACEC would be very valuable to be there. I think um, to jump in on that as well, there's uh, something I'll, I'll often talk about, design BIM versus existing conditions BIM. You know, in, in the design world, uh, you don't hear level of accuracy or LOA talked about very much because when you're designing something, if if you want something to be 10 feet long, you make it 10 feet long. That's how you design it. But in uh, in the world of existing conditions, and we're going to go out and we're going to measure a space, um, you know, what was intended to be 10 feet might actually be, you know, nine foot, 11 and, uh, you know, three quarters or, or some other measurement. And uh, so we kind of have to reconcile these two worlds when we're doing existing conditions, because uh, inches can matter, uh, you know, especially with things uh, like maybe accessibility requirements, ADA, that kind of thing. So um, design intent and uh, how things get built and constructed are really can be two different things. And I think you raise a good point that the industry is changing so quickly, too. Even folks who've got a, a good working knowledge on BIM may learn things from this and, and hear about these new developments that are coming from the U.S. Institute of Building Documentation and what our folks at the Coalition of Professional Surveyors are working on to, to further the industry in this area. Yep, we, we definitely agree with that. It changes every day, this industry. 
Well, Joe Romano, principal and vice president at Langa, John Russo, founder and board member emeritus at the U.S. Institute of Building Documentation. Thank you so much for joining us. For folks that are interested in this upcoming education session, it's going to take place on September 26th, or it will be available online afterward. If you are a member of the Coalition of Professional Surveyors with ACEC, this class will be free. ACEC members get a discount, and it's also available to those who aren't ACEC members, so check out our website for more information on how to sign up for this class. John, Joe, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Great, thank you.